So we are currently on page nine, um, where we're going to talk about and define some of the characteristics of a circle. So a circle is a set of all points um, that has the same distance from the point that's the center, which I'll mark here, um, that is equivalent from the center to any point on the circle. So if I pick any point on the circle, the distance between that the center and that point is the same uh, throughout the entire curve. So the radius is defined as the segment extending from the center to any point on that curve on that circle. So we'll call that R. A chord. So these are definitions of different characteristics of circles. A chord is if you put two points on the circle and you connect the two. This is let's go ahead and call this A B. But that would be segment AB is chord AB. And we would signify segment from first semester with the little bar on top. Segment AB. Any chord that actually goes through the center, which I will change here to blue, um, is called the diameter. So two points on the circle, but this time that value, uh, that chord goes through the center of the circle. We'll call that CD. So chord CD is the diameter. And then any line or array or segment that contains a chord is called a secant. So I will switch over to another color. So it's, it's important to note that a secant is a line, ray, or segment. So if I just connected these two points right here, that would be called a, co a chord. But if I extended that line further out, um, past to infinity and negative infinity in this case, then that's called a secant line. So let's call that line L. So line L is a secant line. And a, a tangent line is one in which the circle, uh, a line touches the circle at just a single point. So let's change colors here. We have the tangent line is going to be in red. And the point at which it touches the circle is called the point of tangency. So we'll call this line M. And line M is our line of tangency. So on here, so that's our tangent line. This point right here, it's supposed to be touching the circle, is let's call that x. x is point of tangency. OK, we would define two congruent circles as two circles, say circle A and circle B, uh, in which the radius values are the same. So I'm going to go ahead and define this radius to be length 3. If I know that radius is 3 and this radius is 3, I would say circle A is congruent to circle B because both radii are congruent. Okay, concentric circles are circles that share the same center. So if you want to think of it as a, as a bullseye, so here's the center, you have one circle with that as the center. Then you have then you have another circle with that as the center. See how this comes out. Okay, so these are what we call concentric circles. They share the same center. Okay, and we've talked about inscribed in the circle versus circumscribed about the polygon. So inscribed has the word in in it at the beginning. So when we say the first figure, the polygon is inscribed in the circle, it means that the polygon over on the right-hand side is inside the circle, as opposed to circumscribed about the polygon. So the circle is outside the polygon. So circumscribed means it's outside. So, And we can use the word in and the word about to help us situate which one is inside and outside. All right, let's go through a few examples here. In circle A, um, we're going to go ahead and identify certain things. So if you want to hit pause and try to fill this out and see what you guys get, check your answers with 1 through 9 here. OK, so the center is point A. The point of tangency is a point through which a tangent line passes a single point on the circle. So that would be D there, so point D. 
a tangent line would be line ed and when i write that line symbol i'm going to make sure i put that double set of arrows on top of my uh, segment symbol six chords since chords are segments i'm going to go ahead and write that as segment fd fb dc and cb the other two are special chords they're the diameter chords um, but db would also be considered a chord and FC. So on number two, they did ask for the two diameter, so I'm going to go ahead and list that out right here. DB, FC. The four radii would have been AF, AC, AB, and AD. A secant line is a line that passes through a chord. So uh, I see this area here and this area here, it goes past the chord. So we're going to say line FC is a secant line. Okay, question eight. Why is AC not a chord, not a chord of, of circle A? So if you look at AC, you notice that this point is the center and it doesn't fall on the circle. So point A is not a point on the circle. It's the center, but it's not a point on the circle. And a chord has two points on the circle. It's a segment that connects two points on the circle. Why is line BD not a chord of circle A? Well, that should have answered our question. It's not a segment. Okay, so a sphere is a three-dimensional version of a circle in which case it's the set of all points in space such that you have the center of the sphere being the center of the great circle. And every uh, point that is on the sphere is equal distant from the center. So this is all various ways of representing the radius or the radii. Okay, and the great circle happens to be the circle that cuts across the center of the sphere. So in, a sp in sphere A, draw a diameter BC. I'm going to purposefully go ahead and draw the sphere so it doesn't fall in the great circle. Or sorry, draw the diameter so it doesn't fall in the great circle. But this is an example of a diameter where you have two points on the sphere and then it passes through the center. A chord DE... So a chord would be two points on the sphere, any two points on the sphere, connect the two, and that's your segment, so segment DE. A tangent CF, so using the same point, how do I draw tangent line CF? So C could be your point of tangency, and then F would be any other point on that tangent line, so CF, tangent CF. And then lastly, secant DG, so secant DG would have to pass through a chord. So let's say you had a point down here that was G. So drawing it like that, that's a chord, but extending that to be a line would then make that say secant DG. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, we're gonna go ahead and look at questions 17, 18, 19, and 20 now. Uh, for 17, you have that they want you to find the value of x. And we're going to work a lot with triangles inside the circles. You can see here that we have uh, what I'm highlighting here is the radii of the circle. And we have two small right triangles. And within that right triangle, this chord right here is 3. This chord right here, or this segment right here is 4. So therefore, we have a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Since that that uh, is the radius of the circle as well as x, we can conclude that x is equal to 5. Okay, on 18, you have 60 degree central angle. You have this is the radius. This is also the radius, so this must be 6. So we see here that if the, this is a isosceles triangle with base angles being congruent and the top angle is 60, that's in fact an equilateral triangle. And if it's an equilateral triangle equilateral triangle, then we have that x must be the same length as 6. 
Okay, number 19. What kind of triangle do you think that is? Good if you guys said uh, a, an isosceles right triangle. So you have that this segment is the radius and so is this. They're congruent. So we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. In which case to go from the leg to the hypotenuse, you would multiply by rad 2. So x equals 4 rad 2. Same situation here. You have this is the radius is 10, this is 10. So to get to this value here, we, which is the hypotenuse of that 45, 45, 90 triangle, you multiply by rad 2. So the question is, if x is just this portion right here, what's the value of x? 